Things like cancer don't just happen. They happen for a reason. So many diseases and disorders in the United States have increased since the introduction of GMOs and Roundup in the food supply in the 1990s. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I get a lot of questions on many different topics when it comes to health in this channel. But one of the questions I get that I think most people are most uneducated about is genetically modified organisms or GMOs. A lot of people will make suggestions and say, well, if something uh, is organic or not, that means GMO and so on. It doesn't. And the biggest issue I have is I don't believe people take GMO food serious enough. So the lack of knowledge about GMO crops, animal food, and beyond that, uh, and everything about that, uh, I wanted to clarify and discuss so people have a better understanding about that. But not only that, years ago I interviewed uh, Jeffrey Smith, who's the author of some amazing books about GMO, and I saw a lecture of him uh, with him uh, at Hippocrates Health Institute, and I myself didn't realize how uh, serious this problem was in terms of our everyday basis, things with foods we eat and everything else, because it might not be in something uh, or it might not be something we're necessarily uh, eating as a food that's GMO, but something in that food product might have a GMO ingredient, which can still affect us tremendously. And when I was listening to his lecture and realized that even my own illness that I had suffering growing up had very likely some GMO ingredients that will lead or or, or, or make people suffer from all different types of diseases. And I know a lot of people out there that are suffering from uh, so many different uh, diseases out there that, that when you look at the connection between that and the GMO in, in Jeffrey's books, it's just astonishing how close they are. And I recommend everyone give up GMO. And so I want to talk a little about today. today and then I want to show you a quick little clip, believe it or not, from the FDA that talks about GMO. And then we're going to have uh, Jeffrey on the show for my interview I did with him years ago uh, speaking about it because I said uh, a lot of people have heard of GMO, uh, but most people uh, don't know what it is. You know, many geo, uh, GMO crops are used to make ingredients that a lot of people in this country uh, are eating every day. And the more you look at ingredients, you see things like cornstarch and corn syrup and corn oil and soybean oil and canola oil or granulated sugar uh, in products. And there are even some fresh fruits and vegetables such as potatoes and apples and some papayas uh, and summer squashes that are literally GMO uh, crops. And you might not be eating uh, all these different things, but they might be in the things you're eating. And the number one, so so here's the thing to first understand is, and, and this video I play after this will simplify it even more, that not all, GMO is not, a lot of foods aren't GMO. There's only like a small list of foods that are technically GMO. Now they're trying to expand the list uh, to make it more. And the reason they say they're doing this is because to make the crops more resistible to disease and so on. For example, apples. They want the apples to last longer in the store and not get brown as fast as if you uh, don't have a GMO or if it's organic or something. So they're trying to create ways. This is why they say they do it, to make it more resistance, make it grow more and so on, where it doesn't create uh, a food shortage or anything else. But the reality is, whether their motives are good or bad or true or not true, the reality is that uh, these things are toxic to the body, not just toxic to the bugs that eat them. And we, we have to be aware of these things. So without a doubt, the number one uh, product all throughout the world, and especially in the United States, is corn or anything to do with corn. Now, not all corn is GMO. If you get organic corn, right now the organic standards means it's not necessarily GMO if it's organic. There's some wiggle room in there because there's only a certain amount that might be able to get in that might be GMO, but it's not technically considered GMO. But in general, the only corn you can get, uh, from my knowledge, that's not genetically modified is organic corn. And it's very difficult to find organic corn uh, on the market today. So the majority of corn and corn products, whether that's uh, corn syrup, corn starch, and all these different things, uh, are all GMO related and I think corn is probably one of the number one crops used uh, in the world today even uh, you know things like uh, 
just all, all the different things, all the different oils and, 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 and out there and everything else. So there's only a few types of GMO crops that are, are grown in the United States, but GMOs make up a large percentage of the crops grown, uh, such as the soybeans, the corns, the sugar beets, the canola, and the cotton. And in, back in 2018, 94% of all soybeans planted uh, G, uh, was GMO. And 94% uh, of all cotton was GMO. And 92% of all corn is GMO. And, uh, and, and so uh, we, ha we have to consider these things. So uh, in uh, the thinking about these things, and, and the, the sugar that's in everything today, the graduated sugar, which comes from sugar beets, all genetically modified. So you got corn, soybeans, cotton. Cotton's another one. You might not eat it, but it's uh, used daily here. And, uh, and the problem is with the cotton seeds and cotton, and the fields are so big, uh, the, the GMO crops will spread over to the next farms and so on. So even if you're not eating GMO foods, if they're near a farm that's using GMO, you could still be affected. Uh, then there, uh, some of the potatoes, uh, some potatoes, uh, papaya now, the, it's the Hawaiian uh, papaya crop because there was a disease in the 90s that kind of wiped out all of Hawaii's papayas. So they started planting GMO papayas and testing with that. Do not eat papaya from Hawaii uh, if you don't want GMO. Uh, summer squash. And for me, the biggest thing I see in all foods today, and I don't know why companies use it, is canola oil or so-called health companies. There's nothing healthy. And I see sometimes canola oil in uh, certain products and it says non-GMO. Well, if canola oil is GMO and it's in a product, technically it is GMO. But they allow that certain wiggle room there and that creates a problem. Another issue is with animals. When animals eat, like for example, alfalfa, uh, they, they give a lot of animals alfalfa and other animal feed that has GMO in those feeds. So now those GMO crops are getting into the animal and passed on to you if you're eating those animals or products from those animals. So that creates a tremendous problem. So you might say, well, I don't eat alfalfa. But you eat animals that eat alfalfa. And that also uh, doesn't reduce the the harmful effects of the G G GMOs. So we just got to be aware of ourselves and we got to know which ones uh, are GMO and what's not. Again, it's not a big list in terms of the crops that are, are used, but those cro if those crops, fruits, and vegetables are in other things that are eaten, well, then it could become a big thing. So here is a, a short video by the FDA and then my interview with uh, Jeffrey Smith. Get his book so you understand the seriousness of this. I'm going to put his links below the video. Thank you for watching. Here we go. What GMO crops are grown and sold in the U.S.? Well, there's corn, like me, soybeans, canola, sugar beets, and cotton. Typically, we're ingredients in certain foods. GMO alfalfa, corn, soybeans, canola, and cotton are used as animal food. And while you won't find many GMOs in the produce section, there are versions of GMO apple, summer squash, potato, and papaya in a few markets. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Smith, and I wrote Seeds of Deception and Genetic Roulette. And uh, my last movie is called Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives. And now there's a movie out called Secret Ingredients. You can watch the trailer at secretingredients.com. It's not actually out yet. We're still working on it, finishing up this summer. Now, in Secret Ingredients, we go to families that switch to organic foods and autistic symptoms disappear. Infertile couples got pregnant and had kids. People with cancer no longer have cancer. Uh, ADHD, skin conditions, um, so many problems, gluten sensitivity, so many problems got better when people switched to organic. Now, I actually did a survey of 3,600 people who say they improved when they switched to non-GMO, most of them by switching to organic, and it was the same kind of answers that I got in over 125 lectures, that when people switch to non-GMO, their digestion improves, they, have, they lose weight, they have more energy, reduce brain fog, the immune system functions better, they have skin conditions clearing up, the mind is better, so there's, they're clearer, there's less anxiety, less depression, a whole host of things. And what I've noticed and what we've discovered and, and studied is that when you look at the nature of GMOs and you look at the nature of Roundup herbicide, which is sprayed both on the GMOs as well as some other crops, it can explain these problems. And if you look at these problems and their growth rate, they seem to rise in parallel 
with the increased use of GMOs and Roundup herbicides. So we think we're onto something huge, and it's simply a matter of switching to organic. And in one sense, you don't have to change your current diet, just eat everything you're already eating, and just make sure it's all organic. And then take notes and see what happens to your body, to your mind, your energy level, and to your health. And then when you find out how good it is, tell everyone. Your books and your information explain the dangers of uh, GMO foods. Is organic 100% uh, avoidable of organic uh, of, of GMOs, or is that not necessarily true? Well, nothing is 100% avoidable with GMOs at this point. If you buy anything with corn in it, it could be organic, which is not allowed to use GMOs. It could be non-GMO project verified, which is not only not allowed to intentionally use GMOs, but they test it. But the non-GMO project, for example, has a 0.9% threshold, so if it's below that, it can pass. Organic has no measures, so you can simply say that it's organic and non-GMO and never measure it because it's not a test-based certification. So whatever it is, if it has corn because it's in the gene pool, contamination can occur. Um, so 100% is too strict a criteria. Some people avoid corn altogether because they feel they don't want any amount. We recommend organic as the number one. If you can't buy organic, at least buy non-GMO. What is actually the difference between uh, organic and non-GMO in terms of from the GMO standpoint? Well, a GMO is where you take a gene from one species and force it into the DNA of other species, or you rearrange genes within the same species. It's not a natural process. It causes massive collateral damage, and we've tracked many, many disorders and diseases in lab animals and related diseases and disorders getting better in humans, livestock, and pets when they get off of GMOs. Um, organic products are not allowed to use GMOs intentionally, but they're also not allowed to use a whole list of prohibitive, pro prohibited substances like toxic herbicides and pesticides and fertilizers. So you can eat something that's non-GMO, let's say a loaf of bread, and it might be that it, that it has no at-risk ingredients that could possibly be GMO, because wheat's not genetically engineered. There's soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, alfalfa, zucchini, yellow squash, papaya, and soon apple and potato, unless we stop it. These are the only genetically modified commercialized crops right now. And let's say you have a loaf of bread that doesn't have any of them. It's non-GMO, and it could be non-GMO project verified as well. But wheat is also sprayed with Roundup. Now, Roundup is sprayed on most GMOs, because 80% are engineered specifically as, quote, Roundup Ready, they won't die when sprayed with Roundup, which normally kills plants. The wheat and all these other crops, wheat, barley, rye, rice, sweet potatoes, potatoes, kiwi, all this long list sugar cane are sprayed with Roundup as part of the ripening process. It actually kills the plant, but it first dries it down, and then the plant sends all of its energy to its offspring as it's taking its last gasp. And so it's a ripening agent, and it also cleans out the weeds for the next growing season. So we're eating heavy doses of Roundup in wheat. So we say, yes, non-GMO is great, but it's not good enough. Organic is necessary in order to really avoid Roundup and these other toxins. Sure. And uh, so you said apples and potatoes coming soon. Is that all apples and potatoes or just a particular variety? There's a variety of apple, um, the Arctic apple, which can be sliced and not brown. So it'll just dry up and disappear and you'll never know that it's old. Same with the potato. There's a potato um, that has a similar property. And they use something called double-stranded RNA, which is a little piece of RNA produced in the inserted gene that silences the browning gene within these crops. And unfortunately, that same silencing gene could theoretically match up with our DNA and silence our genes, reprogram it as it has in lab animals with you know, mice and also with honeybees. Do you know what variety of potato that is? Uh, innate potato. Okay. Now, is it safe to eat the other varieties once something is considered like papayas, Hawaiian papayas, GMO? Is it safe to eat non-Hawaiian papayas? So, the papayas that are genetically engineered are only from Hawaii or China. Um, most of them are genetically engineered. Now, unfortunately, there could be contamination. The way papayas contaminate, you can have a non-GMO tree and you're eating non-GMO papaya, but if it, the flower has been contaminated, the seeds within that papaya plant could be genetically engineered. So some farmers are faked out, they'll eat an organic or a, let's say an organic papaya that's been cross-pollinated accidentally. They love the papaya and they scoop out the seeds and plant it, and now their organic farm is 100% GMO. That's actually happened. So we recommend if you're gonna eat organic papayas from Hawaii, 
order it from a place that's actually been tested to make sure that they are in fact non-GMO so contamination doesn't happen. They found a large number of contaminated organic papayas many years ago, and I don't know the percentage right now. Now there's only a little amount of zucchini and yellow squash that are genetically engineered, so when you order it or buy it, it doesn't say organic, it may be and it may not be. So is what you're suggesting, the average small homestead who has a, a, a couple of acres of property and has a, a garden, it's possible that could be GMO depending if there's a big farm nearby that's using GMO. For the papaya, yes. The papaya could be cross-pollinated with a neighbor. And, uh, you know, the biotech industry says, well, wrap every papaya flower with a bag. I mean, what they force people to do in order to prevent their contamination is abominable. Is there any uh, commercialized test that the average consumer to, can have to know if the food they're putting in their body is GMO? Most GMOs are derivatives of soy and corn and cottonseed oil and canola oil found in processed foods. In order to test for GMOs in processed foods, some of them can't be tested because there's no more DNA, no more protein from the original source, like high fructose corn syrup. So <clears throat> other processed foods can be tested, but it's a laboratory procedure. I used to work in one of those laboratories as the vice president of marketing, and it takes you know, 250 to $300 to $500, depending on what you're testing. And it takes several days. So it's not like you're going to send it in and then have it sitting on your plate waiting to eat it. There's a strip test that you can use in the field for grains. There's even one for papayas that they have out in Hawaii. It's not generally designed for consumers, but it's available, and I think it's about 10 bucks. You talk about all this information in your books and DVDs. And tell us about your website and your new DVD that's coming out. Okay, um, the websites are several, um, responsibletechnology.org, that's from our Institute for Responsible Technology, which I founded 13 years ago, and that has a newsletter, and it has a speaker training program, it has an activist network called the Tipping Point Network, it's got a lot of material, a lot of people rely on it for basic information and deep information about GMOs. To help you avoid GMOs, we have non-gmoshoppingguide.com, and you can also watch uh, rent the movie online, Genetic Roulette, which is the most popular GMO movie in the world. Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives. You can see that at GeneticRouletteMovie.com. And for the trailer of the new movie coming up, it's SecretIngredientsMovie.com. There you see a three-minute trailer, which alone has changed people's diets. Um, we also have Facebook and Twitter available links from our site. And uh, some other movies that I've done are Your Milk on Drugs, Just Say No, and... Hidden Dangers in Kids' Meals, and the two books, as I said, were Seeds, Seeds of Deception and Genetic Roulette, the documented health risks of genetic engineered foods. And what do you do to avoid GMOs or try to avoid uh, GMOs? Nothing's 100 percent. Things might sneak in there, but what, what do you do in your diet? How do you do it? When I purchase food from my home, it's always organic. Um, when I go out to eat, uh, I have to make sure that the oil that they use is not genetically modified oils. Remember, soy, corn, cottonseed, and canola are all genetically engineered, uh, more than 90% in the United States. So the oil is certainly going to be a GMO, unless it specifically says non-GMO or organic. So if I'm going to be eating cooked foods in a restaurant, I'll make sure they don't use the oils. If I'm eating salad dressing, i make sure the salad dressing doesn't come from one of these oils. And then most of the GMOs are visible, corn, tofu, things like that. Some GMOs are not visible, like soy sauce and sugar, so you have to find out what they cook or, or, or serve them. So you're saying soy sauce is GMO? Soy sauce can be GMO. Is it has soy? Soy can be GMO, yes, absolutely. And sugar? sugar Processed sugar? Or any yeah, sugar? It's sugar. If you say sugar in the United States, it's more than 50% from sugar beets. And nearly all sugar beets in the United States are genetically engineered. And the sugar cane is sprayed with Roundup. So coming or going, sugar is going to be an issue. Um, but if you want to avoid the GMO portion, then buy products that say pure cane sugar. Or grow them yourself, right? Or grow them yourself. Well, it's hard to grow cane, I guess. So yourself. pure cane sugar is, your, is pure. It doesn't mean it hasn't been used Roundup? No, pure cane sugar could be used Roundup. They don't yeah. list the pesticides and fertilizers, etc. on the label. So Great. it's not labeled. Great. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so much for this information. I know you have a great resource I want people to get. Is there anything else you want to say to the audience before uh, we finish here? Sure. Um, we've been educating people about the health dangers of GMOs. I've been doing it for 20 years, and it's having a difference, making a difference. 58% of Americans say they're looking for non-GMO foods, and that's not lost in the food companies. Most major food companies have at least some products 
that are non-GMO, and some are converting their entire lines to non-GMO. The tipping point of consumer rejection is underway. It already tipped in the natural products industry in March 2013. It tipped in the bovine growth hormone world. Uh, before that, now it's tipping in the conventional food. And we've been helping create the behavior change messaging to give consumers the information they need to make that happen. So if you're interested in becoming an activist, an advocate, a change agent, go to responsibletechnology.org, consider taking the speaker training, joining a group, and especially get familiar with the film Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives. It's the most effective tool we've ever tested to convert someone on the spot to a non-GMO diet. It's a thing you can give to your cousins and friends and parents, etc. They're not paying any attention to you because it's you. Just let me do the work for you and show them the film. And when Secret Ingredients comes out, that'll be more powerful. Great. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. Sure. All right, everybody. There it was. I hope that it's really touching you to, to really research this and uh, consider this. And, and you know, there's a tremendous amount of information out there uh, on uh, genetically modified foods to help you make wise decisions. And I really hope you do. Get Jeffrey Smith's books. They're excellent. See his lectures online. Wonderful, uh, informative, and really eye-opening. Okay, his links are below the video, everybody. Thank you for watching. Have a great day and a great world life. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.